Good morning guys, hope you're having a beautiful day. I'm gonna share a secret with you. We're gonna talk about one of the biggest problem in marketing and photography. And I found over the years, and maybe you can share what you think, that the megapixel count is one of the biggest problem we have that's been like integrated in our brain. It's a great marketing tool to tell people the iPhone whatever has 48 megapixels, the other one only had 12, and this one has only 36 and 24. But at the end of the day, does it really matter? That's the question I'm asking myself all the time because I'm gonna tell you a big secret, a very, very, very big secret. I have the A7S III that you probably know as a camera. It only has 12 megapixels, but I shoot with it all the time. It's literally one of the camera I use the most for photography whenever I don't want to have to overthink it. What do I mean by that? The A1 is great, it's a beast, but it has a lot of definition, high resolution, and when I'm shooting, let's say, family stuff, events, or just an evening out, or when I'm just walking around in the streets, I don't always want or need the best definition. And that's why 12 megapixel is more than enough in most cases. So today, we're gonna go shoot with 12 megapixel because I wanna show you that you can get great photos. And before you tell me anything about prints, let me put my 85 millimeter on, my GoPro, and we're gonna go POV style, and then we'll talk about that print issue. All right, tell me what you guys think about the prints at 12 megapixel. Is that, do you think it's an issue or not? Because the argument I always hear regarding my camera has too low of a megapixel count is that if I want to print it big, then it's an issue. But what I found out through the years, and because I'm a photographer who also sells his work, is that you can enhance your images and then you get a higher megapixel count. Through that, the quality comes out well, and I literally shot with a drone photos that I sold and they were cropped massively, and then I was able to enhance the shot after, which didn't make it a big megapixel count, but it made it big enough for the print and remember you print also the amount of definition you need is related to distance so you bigger the print you further you're watching it from and that's something to remember the big advertisement you see the big billboards they don't have high definition in a way because you're looking at it from so far so you don't need to see all the details from super close by the way this is my bike and i uh, forgot my bike lock also broke broke my helmet on the way in city so I had to buy a, a new helmet we're gonna try to go shoot a little bit in that direction I think it's gonna be a little more interesting I have to put on my gloves it's actually pretty cold here uh, I don't know if you're from Chicago or if you're around Chicago but I can tell you it gets cold very quickly so honestly why do I shoot with the ASMS 3 3 as a photo camera it's great in low light yes this is this is a really good conclusion you could have be like oh it's because he wants to shoot in low light yes that's one reason where it's excellent especially if i go at an event or if i shoot um in the evening it's really nice i don't know what's happening here but could make for interesting photos chicago is always like with a ton of things happening um the reason i shoot with this one a lot is because oh, i love this 85 because I love the sound of the shutter. You hear that shutter? It's really cool. But most importantly, what I love about it is that it's a little bit of like shooting with a, a camera that's very simple in a way, like a disposable camera. And not that it's too complex, the other cameras. And that one, uh, I don't know how to explain it, honestly. It is a, it's a camera that's, hmm, how can I explain it easily? When I, what I love about it is that it forces me, because it's 12 megapixel, to actually shot exactly how I want it, you know? And not think that I'm gonna crop it later or that I'm gonna improve it. I need to do it right in camera. And that, I always love that feeling. It's always easier. What I do usually with those is I either take the 2470, for example, when I was a lot in, uh, where was it? When I was in French Polynesia. Uh, I used to take the 2470, this is the guy in the car that's hilarious. And then just the SMS3 and go for the day. Or if you put a 35 mil or 85 millimeter 1.8 like this one, this looks really good. I'm trying to get a photo of this guy, but his head is like hidden. But I'm trying to get a little bit of the framing. There we go.
Can I take a photo of you? Yeah, yeah you look good. There you go. Lovely. I wanted to get the shot in the mirror that would look good so yeah uh, and the way this camera shoots is, is very I, I'm telling you I love the sound of it and um, if you look into it maybe the autofocus is not the A1 or the burst but at the end of the day I'm usually using the same autofocus which is spot mill and then I go in and change it and adapt but the most important part about it is that I don't need the best tracking ever when I'm doing street photography or when I'm in uh, some simple situations. Why is that? I don't know about that shot. It's not super interesting. Maybe if we go a little bit lower. Yeah, but it's still a little bit boring. There needs to be some action happening here. Uh, people screaming. Oh, this is the shot. This is the shot when, when the guy comes back. Oh no, it's too far now. I don't know. Ah, damn it, I missed it. This was a good shot. It's too far now. This car is like broken. Yeah, there we go. We got some action happening with this guy. Uh, let's see. Which way are we gonna shoot towards? I think we're gonna go this way. There's so much reflection, we can't see anything. This is a great spot to shoot at night. It looks really good, but right now there's so much reflection. I don't know if we can get any shots. Sometimes, nope. We're not gonna see anything at all. Even even if I put the polarizing filter, I don't think we'll see much. Those are kicks. Yeah, no, this is not coming through. Maybe, 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 nope. Maybe. Maybe if I go manual. It's one of the things. Oh. There you go. Uh, could be, could be, could be. Oh, let's see. Let's cross the road and try to get a shot from the other side of the road. It could look cool. Sometimes. Yeah, looking good, man. <laughs> look at this. Go, bye bye. Yeah, yeah, looking oh, good. Okay. Oh. <laughs> man. Uh, this is what I love when I shoot downtown in Chicago. You can always find like people having some fun. Oh, nice. Chicago here at night. Nice. Yeah. Beautiful. See. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Toda, hey. toda, toda. Oh, qué lindo. <laughs> bueno. Thank you. Bueno. Hablamos. Gracias. Hablamos. Oh, guys, we've got a Apollo. We've got the yellow uh, school buses. I want to take. I want to try to find like some interesting frames with those. And maybe we'll get something with the reflection. I don't know because it's full of trash. So I can't, can't promise anything, but the one thing I can promise is we can try. Another good thing with this camera is there's a flip screen, right? You can always flip screen your life if you want to. Boom, look at this. Flip screen. Well, some may say, oh, you can do that with any camera. True. That has a flip screen, but you know, the best camera is the one you have, honestly. And I know it's tempting. There's so many deals right now. Maybe very tempting to buy a new one. But look, 
at the end of the day what matters is if you go shoot more because you have a new camera great but if you don't shoot more or you're afraid to use it because it's too new then maybe don't get a new camera get a photography course instead of your favorite photographer no matter what who it is where it is from maybe there is something new you can learn to unlock the way you shoot you know always important let's see which way we can go here I haven't shot this area in a long time some areas are like interesting but others get a little bit like funky slash boring so I want to see how we could do that all right you know what we're gonna have fun with this like school bus truck we're gonna try different angles okay or like try different perspective on that school bus so first one's gonna be right here second one's gonna be like oops and manual shot and manual we're gonna go and drag the shutter a lot there you go and okay next car coming but it's still like a little overexposed See what we're getting. Uh, kind of boring. Uh, I don't like it too much. I mean, you get a try, you know. I think it's more interesting if with people walking fast around it. Whoop! Does a little close. <laughs> All right, second angle. Let's try to find something to say. Ooh, there's a hat in there, so there might be a little story around here. The story of the driver with his hat. Let's see what we got here. Uh, so much reflection today everywhere. Oh, there we go. Some detail shot. Let's see if we can get better detail shot here. Oh, wow, this is... That is a lot so sometimes it gets like super confusing with reflections so what you want is to try to find a black background for the reflection i don't know i think like 35 mil would work better because we could have the um, oh there was literally the guy sleeping in there we could have the guy sleeping and the truck which would look cool but i don't know if we can get it so it's kind of this is a fun shot like that. Doot, doot, doot. Boom. Oh, this one right there. Now we got the hat. Look, this is cool. I wonder if the guy's gonna get annoyed. Yeah, that's cool. If you want a little more cinematic, you just go landscape, and then you crop it after. 16 by 9. The dude is sleeping now. Huh? So cute. There's something with the street shots I'm always trying to do lately. It's trying to get like cleaner, cleaner backgrounds. Um, and getting the subject maybe on the cleaner background with to the sky for example stuff like that it's not always super easy look we've got a nice car over there i don't know what the car is but it looks cool let's see you can get a little bit of framing in there boom maybe f18 up yo what's up brother I just told him, told him oh yeah yeah thanks yeah i'm taking the car oh yep this looks good this with um like at night would look so good right now you know like the guy eating there with a little bit better um lighting because got so much reflection happening it's kind of tough and so 
The other great thing when you shoot with like not too many megapixel where you're not gonna reframe after, that's why I encourage a lot of people to shoot with their phones also, is that it's gonna force you to nail it, right? And what I mean by nailing, I mean that you have to pay attention to everything that's in your frame. You can't really rely on something else after. You see, I'm waiting for the reflection, the black reflection of the car in the shot so I can see the subject a little better. I don't know which shot will have worked, but... And I went manual focus also. Let's see. No, that's white. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Ooh, I think we got it. Yeah, you see, like, boom, the guy disappears and now he appears. So, this is an interesting shot. We're gonna try to go a little more in the city now. But I wanna, let me know in the comments right now, do you shoot with like, are you concerned by the megapixels on your camera? Are you concerned by how much definition you have and how good the camera is? Because if that's a concern, please, 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 try to shoot with all the cameras and see how you feel with it. Because you'll notice that a lot of aspects are gonna go away. And if you're doing street photography, a lot of it is going back to the basics, you know? And it doesn't have to be fancy, doesn't have to be complex or anything. Oh, this could be a good shot. If I can get like just the head in the sky with the towers, with the headphones, that's cool. Da -da -da -da. All right, see you inside over there. Look at those little doggies. Ooh, boom. This guy is, <laughs> was super well framed here between the two buildings. The dogs, I don't know. Ah, oh, no, they're out of focus. How? How? Strike in. The dog's getting scared. <laughs> Oopsie. Ooh, 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 guy crossing over there. Looking good. Uh, and that's the moment you're like, oh, I wish I could crop. <laughs> So sometimes I do wish I could crop. But at the end of the day, I use what I use. You know? Whew. Ooh, guys. 85, 1, 8. Okay, let's shoot and get some bokeh. I love those, like, just vibes with those, with the grass, you know? Sometimes it's just nice. Then we can do a background shot, but. Look, if you get the foreground and that contrast between the nature, you know, right here, maybe we can increase a little bit the aperture. And that factor in the background, I found, I found it quite striking, you know, it's like that just juxtaposition of two elements, which are very contrasted in my opinion. Now, not necessarily the best shot, but it can say something. And if a shot can say something, it's a good shot. You know, no need to be... And the trends are like the most trendy shot every time. Look, we're gonna try to take a little lower with just the tower. Boom. And then we're gonna do the same, but we're gonna focus on the grass now. Grass focus, please. Okay. See, two different shots. Two different feelings, same spot. I love that about photography. You can tell anything depending on how you look at things. And yes, you might have noticed I haven't been in the streets in a while in Chicago. I've done much street photography because I was traveling and I was really excited by what I was shooting, but a little bit in a different way, you know, like not having to always be creating cre street videos and stuff. It's nice to have a balance where I do other things because although I'm known for street photography here, at the end of the day, I love, love 
to dive to have a diversity in what I'm shooting and in how I'm shooting so it's always a good reminder if you are getting too known in an area it's probably time for you to expand a little bit back your scope and tone it down so that you don't forget what you really love versus what people love you for that's very very important especially in this world of uh, fast social media but I do love street photography look at it it's always fun uh, 35 millimeter would be good we would have the top of the tower also it's a little tight uh, that's cool loving it oh some people <laughs> the dog is chasing the leaves that's awesome I was like the dog's chasing the leaves, that's so I cute. Know, I know. <laughs> the dog is hey buddy. Hi, oh wow. Yeah. Hello. Oh, oh no, are no, you excited? Sorry. Yeah, Hello. I've that's okay. Yeah, really. My, my dog, my son's dog, so uh, Don't worry. Not good with that. <laughs> that's cool. He look he's nice. Yes, bro. Look at the big bubble on the side. <laughs> oh. oh, the leaves are moving. <laughs> I hope you got a good That's the cutest. A good shot. Bye! Oh, Jiminy, I'm not doing a good job holding them. He's strong, he's low, well, but he's strong. Yeah, I know, he looks very strong. Or he, I'm weak. No, he looks pretty muscular for his yeah. side. Jesus. Yeah, the guy is goofy. Oh, oh la la. I have a long lens, buddy. Sorry, I can't take photos that close yeah, today. Yeah, he's got a broken leg too, to boot. Oh, really? Huh. Yeah, poor guy. Well, I won't distract you much more. It was very nice seeing you. Yes, you likewise. Your orange. Enjoy the sky. <laughs> you too. Bye. Oh, man, that duck came so close. This would have been like perfect 16 millimeter shots like where he's like in your face but like 85 on 8 on this no there's no way like none of these shots work maybe the last one but that's pretty lame <laughs> hilarious remember practice 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 guys don't be afraid to fail do not be afraid because in every failure there is learning the time you miss a shot you learn something you're like oh could have moved here oh this could work better next time, you know? It's, it's okay to, to miss it. You don't have a... No one knows perfectly how it works, you know? Even if maybe YouTubers make it seem like it. But remember, us as YouTuber, we can filter what you see. I try to not filter too much. I can't pretend that I don't filter anything, but I try not to filter too much. And I try to show you a lot of film shots, so you actually See that it's not perfect. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Oh, let's see. If we can have a cool frame here. Good dog here. Lady here. I love those like shots where like people are just looking sideways or a little bit up. You don't really see their faces but you get the ambience with the headphones i'm having a hard time doing it right now i think 85 is a little tough maybe at the 50 it's a little easier oh we got good light here in the heading there oh what can we do good light it's good subject Good light over there too. You see that person crossing? Dang, ding. Oh, person with a tripod in the middle of the road. Photographer friend? Ah, I 
wish she crossed in the light. <laughs> She's so struggling with the dog. It's hilarious. So cute. That dog was strong, honestly. Okay, I literally let go of the camera for a second and a guy came out of there with a the bike and I lit and I missed it. I'm like, are you joking? That's always how it happens, by the way. Okay, here, we've got a few frames possible here. First one, boom. And then second and third. Good, that's okay. Next time, lower like that, it's gonna be better. Okay, well, we've got no one now. Hello? Anybody? Nope, nobody. Oh, someone's coming. Oh, yeah, that's my friend. That's my friend. Uh, I know the car wants to go. Thank you, car. Oh, there we go. Boom. That's the cool. Love that. Need to edit it a little bit better, but uh, I could have pushed a little bit my frame to the right. Anyway, I got a second opportunity there. There we go. Okay, let's try this again. Oh, please. So I tried to pre-focus where the dog would be, but at 1.8, I honestly should have just shot that at f5. Because that was like a big risk. I don't think it could have worked. But I'm going to try one more. Okay. Practice makes perfect. By the way guys, if you are not part of the newsletter, my top five, please make sure you're watching, you're, you're following because... Uh, damn it, I missed my frame again. Gotta stop talking, Pierre. I'm gonna go in tracking. Not available as follow. Single shot out of focus. I'm in single shot, okay. I'm gonna change to... No, I'm not in single shot. There we go. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. You can take a picture of me if you want. <laughs> I will. All right, let's try again. Let's try again. Our shot. We're gonna get it. We're gonna get it. No, that that's still one. Of them. Why does it? Why can I not change that? I'm not in single focus mode. I'm not in single point. I don't get it. I'm having a weird error. Tracking expanded. Focus mode. Single shot out of focus. Single shot out of focus. I'm not in single shot out of focus. Oh, I am. Oh, what am I doing in single shot? What? Wow. This was confusing. Why was I in single shot? Anyway. <laughs> there you go. Sometimes tracking is helpful. I like that frame. 
like that for him. All right, let's continue this adventure. I'm going for a little classic shot and I'm gonna admit something, guys. And this is how real it is. I actually made a huge mistake and from the beginning of the shoot and I don't know how it happened I've been in autofocus single shot versus continuous it never happens because I'm in back button focus so I automatically am in EFC somehow I was in EFS I just discovered like how so maybe that's why I was like missing some of the shots of like movement because I'm used to just press it's not a big issue uh, they're probably fine but I was like wondering how why some shots just look like a little bit out of focus? Ugh. That when you realize that like halfway in your shoot, you're like, oops. Well, this is just practice, so that's fine, but always something to consider, you know, whenever you're shooting for a client, triple check everything. Always. Oh, that lady on this on the sunny side crossing, that's cool. I love when you get like those contrasts between like super strong shadows and then sunny that's nice you see right there that's cool but i don't think this is gonna be a, a shot unless someone crosses on ro red mm -mm -mm -mm. now let's see maybe someone's gonna cross on red Meh. Meh. Not that interesting. It's okay, but I can do better with these. Yeah, <laughs> that dog was looking straight at me, and the shot is totally blurry. Uh, I need to change my minimum shutter speed. Ooh, look at the light hitting that restaurant. Ooh, look at this guy. The light on his face is epic. Oh, oh that's I want a 200 millimeter right here. Let's see if we can be discreet and get a shot. Let's see. Me, me. Might be a little complex, but there we go. Oh, the book here around this epic. It's really cool. I love that light. That's so pretty. Wow, this was super fun. So to conclude guys, I forgot my camera clip and this clip is extremely important. It's one of my most important camera piece of gear gear camera piece you got it and second of all 12 megapixel is way more than enough for 99 percent of the time honestly don't get caught if i'm shooting with the r5 with the a1 and it looks incredible and i'm talking about how i can crop and do so many things yes i can when i have it but i'm also equally as happy to shoot with those cameras or with the disposable camera with anything the most important is to get out here and to be here to be in the streets to be shooting to have fun to try something different try something new and repeat remember practice 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 will get you where you want to be not getting the latest gear or getting the latest tool that's necessary so with that being said guys i'll see you in the next one i absolutely need to pee.